Welcome to the Villanova Football Signing Show for 2021. I'm Steve Pannone. We're going to be joined by head coach Mark Ferrante. The Wildcats signed a nine-person class. Uh, coach, first off, congratulations. Uh, I want to start with an outstanding season. You guys come off a 10-3 and three year, 7-1 uh, and one in the CAA, some quality wins. You go on the road, you beat a really good JMU team, 28-27. And always a kind of important win for Villanova fans, that w win of the Battle of the Blue, beating the Delaware Blue Hens 21-13. And you guys advanced to the FCS quarterfinals. So the program has made some great strides over the last two seasons. Yeah, thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for being here with us today to talk about the signing day that we were going to have. But, you know, as you mentioned, the, the season we had is just uh, spectacular. You know, get an opportunity to, you know, get a CAA title for the first time since 2012 is pretty special. And, uh, you know, the resiliency of this team, we talk about it all the time. You know, we're sitting here in front of our mantra here, the tap the rock motto, uh, which is all about resiliency. And when you look back on it, you know, Steve, you've been with us for a long time. That 2019 season, we lost in the first round. And, you know, then 2020 hit. And 2020, while it was going on, was really long and, and tough. And you know, the guys had to really, you know, face a lot of adversity and keep tapping the rock, so to speak. And uh, then when you see where we are today at the end of 2021, 2020 is almost a blur, you know. But it really just makes it, in my opinion, that much more special for these guys to really hang with us for that long. You know, we had a couple that transferred out and I don't blame them at all because once we found out we weren't having a fall of 2020 we had some guys that were already graduated and you know they wanted to play football that fall and I get it but the, by and large the the large number of our guys the the core nucleus of our team from 19 stuck with us all the way through that and I just tip my hat to those guys and, and what they were able to accomplish so um, couldn't be more proud of this team couldn't be more proud of this staff all the support we've had from the entire university Father Peter Mark Jackson all the way down through everybody you know uh, our guy Greg who you know cleans our locker room and our weight room for us he traveled to the Elon game he's traveling up to you know he was uh, one of our top fans as we're coming out of the locker room on the away games let alone the home game so we just had tremendous support we had tremendous uh, camaraderie amongst the team, and, and it showed on the field. You know, the commitment that they had and the love that they had for each other really showed on the field. You know, the comeback against Richmond in the last five minutes of the game was spectacular. As you mentioned, you know, beating JMU, you know, with that victory, getting the opportunity to beat them at their place and, and get a get a, a CA title, uh, sharing it with them, but still to get a CA title. And then whenever we play our rival game, we always want to have that trophy come back to the main line. And thankfully, uh, we did lose it in the spring, but we didn't have to wait a whole year to get it back. So it was awesome to win the Battle of the Blue and get that back so 10 win season those are hard to come by um, you know obviously we'd all love to still be playing there's four teams left we made it to the final eight we'd love to be one of the guys playing this Friday or Saturday evening uh, of the upcoming weekend but I don't want to lose sight of what the uh, spectacular season that our guys put together. And, Coach, part of having a spectacular season means you have a lot of quality players. And in, in every college program, some of those guys have to move on and they need to be replaced with recruits. And that's really what we're here to focus on today. You bring in a class of, of nine, uh, five on defense, three on offense, and one specialist. Talk a little bit about your recruiting philosophy as a whole. Obviously, you don't want to overload one position. You only have so many scholarships to spread around the, the roster. Talk about, your, I guess, you as a, you and your staff, the philosophy you went into for this season. Yeah, it's hard because – especially now the way the, the recruiting calendar ha has shifted. You know, everything happens so much more earlier than it used to. You know, it used to be back in the old days, you know, you wait until you see their senior film, and then you go out and you recruit them at the end of their senior year going through the, you know, December and January months, and then you sign a class in February. Now it's junior offers and sometimes sophomore offers and you know everything's so much earlier today's december 15th so as far as you know signing a class in december as opposed to wait until february it's just so much different than it used to be and sometimes these decisions are made well in advance of where we are now as far as the signings a lot of these guys have verbally committed to us over the summer you know, so they've been with us and they've stuck true to us and, and actually actually put their name on the dotted line today, which is tremendous. And, you know, you're also evaluating your current roster. Yep. You know, there's some guys that are on our roster right now that may not have been on scholarship going into the season. And then because of the year they had, 
do we have an opportunity to award them a scholarship based on their merit of what they're doing on our current roster while we're looking for guys to add to next year's roster. So it's uh, something you do year round. Uh, you've been in coaching before. You know what it's like. It's probably the hardest thing we do, but it's the lifeblood of the program. Yep. You know, you bring in good quality young men and that are good players and, and good people and good students and good uh, character guys. You're going to have a good team. You know, and, and that's what we try to do. And our staff does a great job. You know, we got guys coming in from various parts of the country, but when they get here, they got to all come together and, and bring it together. And our our team this year was able to do that. And uh, hopefully, these guys that we're adding, this is a majority of the class. It's not all the class. We still have a little work to do. So between now and February, we'll still have a couple more uh, people out on the road when we have the opportunity to get out there and look for a few more spots. You can see this. Uh, roster right now is light in the O and D line area, so you know there's some things there that we're still looking at, and uh, we are still looking for another place kicker. You know, right now Danny's can do some place kicking, but he's also our punter that we're looking for the future, the one that's uh, signing with us today. So you can see we're we're more skill position with this group of guys, and we'll uh, move forward and look for some linemen and you know another specialist as we get into the February signing period. But really pleased with the group of guys we have here. Because we, we talked a lot about the quality regular season wins you guys had. We mentioned JMU specifically. The comeback against Richmond was huge early in the year. And then the end of the regular season with a great win over Delaware. But uh, one that was special, I think, because one, one it was a playoff victory and a playoff victory at home against Holy Cross. Uh, how do you mean a, a nice next step for your program? Yeah, it's good. We build off of 2019. You know, the the my first few years, 2017, 2018. You know, we didn't didn't go according to plan or what we had hoped or what the expectations level was. And then in 19, we got back to the playoffs and we got a taste of the playoff. Before, you know. Uh, performance and postseason play and, and then that whole void again that 2020 like I said it's kind of a blur but to be where we are now and get back to the playoffs two consecutive seasons two consecutive fall seasons if you will we missed it in the spring and then uh, to advance get a first round by be a top seeded team that was awesome gave our guys an opportunity to catch their breath a little bit and go home for Thanksgiving and then to get that first playoff win you know that's great and then you know, obviously came up a little short next week, but it's all building blocks. It's all stuff you can learn from and continue to build upon. And we are graduating a lot of guys, but when you look at the roster top to bottom, we have a pretty good nucleus coming back as well in a lot of the positions. So there will have to be some guys to step up, and uh, it's their turn to take over some positional needs. So, uh, And we're going to bring in a young class, and these guys will have an opportunity as well. So we didn't need as many young guys this year because of the maturity level we had with the fifth and sixth year guys. Next year, we'll have a little less of that, so we'll need more of these younger guys to step up. And you never know, you could be reading about some of these guys that signed with us today, next fall. We're going to take a quick look at some of the highlights from the great win over Holy Cross. the screen it is caught by Jackson 30 20 10 what a run and it's gonna be a give to Covington and can he get into the end zone on second effort yes he does Villanova touchdown the extra point is on the way and it is good step for step who else but Christian Bedford, Bedford. incomplete he gets it right up the middle and Townsville's there to shut him down in a hurry. Smith back to pass, looking for Ismail. Makes a catch inside the 10 yard line. What a catch. Smith is gonna give to Covington, breaks a tackle to five and he easily goes into the end zone for a Villanova touchdown. Cats lead 13-0, 112 to go, second quarter. What a huge moment in this game to score before the end of the second quarter. What a drive, what a drive by Danny Smith and the crew. Here's the extra point by Cole Butts. It's on the way and it is good. TD Ayoduro Jai at the 15th to the 20, trying to find an angle, 30, 35, 40. 
into territory all the way to the 40 yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. 30, 25, 20, breaks another tackle. Inside the 15, Villanova first down. It is gonna be a give to Jackson up the middle. A gaping hole, 10-5, Villanova touchdown. Almost untouched. It is knocked away. Tremendous play by Ty Trin. Cats win. Cats win. Cats win. Final score. Villanova 21. Holy Cross 16. And welcome back to the Villanova Football Signing Show. We're joined by offensive coordinator Chris Bowden. Coach, you bring in just a three-person offensive class here in this early signing period, but a, a lot of skilled guys that you think can obviously help the program down the road. Let's start at quarterback Tanner Maddox uh, out of Fleetwood High School in Pennsylvania, 6'1", 180 pounds, a Berks County Player of the Year nominee, an all-county DB, which is something we've, we've talked about a lot. First team all-defensive back. 2,150 2, total yards, 21 touchdowns. But here's an interesting stat for a quarterback. He led the county with seven interceptions. Correct. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, and he's just a tremendous athlete. He's a tr uh, tremendous competitor, uh, first and foremost. Uh, you know, we had him in camp. Uh, we loved his junior film. We brought him down to camp, and he did a phenomenal job with me. Uh, it, the camp got cut short because of lightning, so <laughs> didn't have uh, an exceptionally long time to look at him. But uh, I just loved his personality. I loved his compete level. Um, I love the fact that he can make a lot of throws from a lot of different angles and contort his body, uh, kind of similar to Danny Smith. So, you know, I, I kind of I think they're very comparable um, players on the field. And, again, the fact that he plays defense and, and he's kicking the ball and, and he's lighting people up on defense, I mean, he, he plays with no fear. And he is uh, he is all about football. Um, you know, he's just uh, he, he's a tremendous kid, and uh, we're really excited to get him here. And then he, you're going to give him someone to hand the ball off to in your run game, and that's Eli Smith, the running back out of Second Baptist High School in Texas. He was a first-team All-State running back. Uh, Houston TD Club Offensive Player of the Year finals, 1,400 yards rushing and 19 touchdowns, so pretty complete player. Yeah, he's a big back. He's a physical back. He's very athletic. Um, you know, he's uh, – when the ball's in his hands, the first guy never brings him down. And that's something that we look, you know, from the running back position of, you know, how are they, you know, yards after contact. And he, he, he really had a great year, had a great junior year. Uh, it was nice. You know, he came up with his family and uh, visited Villanova as well. Um, you know, he was the top running back on our board, too. So, you know, going back through the spring and everything, uh, you know, we feel really blessed uh, that we got him. Uh, and, you know, really excited to get him here and start working with him. And then you, you go out wide a little bit to the wide receiver position. A guy with great size, Nate Hill, 6'3", 205 pounds, out of Texas as well. Second team all-district wide receiver, and an honorable mention all-state player, 545 receiving yards. Hauled in five touchdowns for a Division One state championship team down in Texas. So sounds like you've you've really kind of gotten your skill position set. Yeah, um, yeah. Nate was a kid that again was the top receiver on our board, and I know early on he was he had a commitment to the Naval Academy, and eventually decided to back off of that. And you know, we, again, we feel really lucky to get him. Uh, he was a top receiver on our board for a very very long time, and. Uh, I'm glad it worked out, but again, to get someone with with his size and length, his speed, he's a smooth route runner. He's got great hands, um, you know. And again, you it's you can get guys faster and quicker, but you can't make them taller. So uh, <laughs> you know, we're again, we're really excited to have him. I think he's you know going to be able to step in and play pretty quickly. And coach, offensively, you guys had an outstanding season. Uh, you're going to lose some pieces to that. You know, I'm thinking of obviously Dan Smith's moving on, Todd Summers, a couple of guys, and you know, MJ Dumas up front a little bit, but just. Uh, recap your, your your season offensively. You know the huge comeback against Richmond early on, the explosive win over JMU. But just talk a little bit about overall your your your, your thoughts on your offensive team this year. Yeah, I thought we did a really good job. Uh, I thought we had a lot of balance. Um, you know, we were playing four running backs, which is really hard to get all those guys touches. Uh, a lot of receivers rolled in. Uh, you know, the the game against Richmond was amazing to be able to come back. Uh, you know, that quickly. Uh, the game against JMU was uh, phenomenal. Um, you know, when we got rolling offensively, it felt like. You know, no one could stop us. And, you know, we, we do lose some guys offensively, but we do have seven starters coming back. And, you know, I think the guys that they're replacing, uh, we have guys to be able to step in. And, uh, you know, to have the entire receiving core back is huge. To have three running backs, you know, back is huge. And four out of five starters on the O-line. I mean, that's – you're going in the right direction. Now all those guys got to step up and play. But, you know, overall, we were really happy. We did a tremendous job in the red zone of, of punching in touchdowns. Uh, and that was something that, you know, we really – you know, emphasized after the spring. So um, overall, we're very happy. You know, always can get better. But, um, you know, for right now, you know, we're just kind of looking for the future and 
uh, excited to get to spring ball. And it's not too often, especially as an offensive coordinator, where maybe your most significant play of the year was a one-yard run. That's probably not something you want to talk about. But that JMU game, let's talk a little bit about you and Coach Franny on the headset as you're getting ready to – it's fourth and one in your own end zone, in your own uh, part of the field and the decision to go for it and then your decision on what play to call. Yeah, there was a timeout, and Coach Franti immediately said, we're going for it. And I was like, all right, let's go. And then – Somewhere on the headphone, someone's like, are you sure? And I was like, no, 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 we, we got this. And, you know, he was 100%. He was uh, very clear, hey, this we're going to go for it. And, hey, you know, in that situation, uh, it's not the scheme. It's not trying to trick anyone. It's putting the ball in the best player's hands. And, hey, we needed one yard. We're going to give it to Justin Covington. He's going to get it done. And uh, I, I thought the whole play was great. We kind of went on two, which slowed them down just a half, you know, just a second. And, um, you know, Cove, Cove's second effort was amazing. And, uh, just it was just an amazing feeling, you know, after a great game, and uh, you know, it felt great, you know, to put the ball in our hands of saying, "Hey, win or lose the game," and and we came through. And you guys then go into victory formation, and you get a quality win uh, of that part of the season, a big 28-27 win over JMU. And we're going to look at some of the highlights from that game. going to be a keeper by Smith. He's got some room. 15, 10, 5. Can he get in? We're waiting for the call. It's a Villanova touchdown. Purchase your tracks today. It's going to go down the left sideline, and this one is going to be incomplete. It was intended for Antoine Wells, Christian Benford, step for step. It is going to be a give up the middle. Coming, he's got a lot of room. 50, 45, 40. It's a foot race. 30, 20, is anybody going to catch him? No, sir. Touchdown, Villanova. Justin Covington right up the gut. Cats lead 13-7. Purchase your Throws down the middle of the field. Boykin with an incredible catch. And the kick is good. Wow. From 43 yards. Steps up. He's going to be sacked on the play. Getting there first was Jared Nelson. Okay. Ringles open. Can he come up with a catch? Yes, he does at the 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! The kick by Rack. He is on the way. And he hits the upright. He missed it. He missed it. Smith is going to give it to Covington. He spins. He got the first down. The Cats are going to win this one on the road. Almost for certain. Villanova has gone on the road to Harrisonburg, Virginia, and they have won the game of the year as the Wildcats shut out the Dukes in the second half. Villanova, 28, JMU, 27. We're joined by defensive coordinator Ola Adams. And Coach Adams, you guys bring in a five-person defensive class to help you on that side of the football. Our first one we want to talk about, Michael Kennedy, defensive lineman from Southside Christian in South Carolina. 6'1", 290 pounds, was a 1A all-region team player, first-team all-state, and a uh, 2001 in Class A state championship, so a winning pedigree. Yeah, uh, you know, we actually got involved uh, with Michael Kennedy you know, towards, you know, the beginning of our season, you know, but once we start the season, it's kind of hard to get those guys on campus. So we actually just did a early official visit, you know, with him this past weekend. You know, so it's good to meet him in person and kind of feel him out, you know, as a human being and, you know, just get to know him. And uh, I really thought, you know, he fit in here well. You know, he presented himself well, but you know, as a football player, I mean, he's a, he's a pretty dynamic and awesome uh, prospect for us. Do you see him playing out on the edge? Do you see him playing inside for you? Yeah, we, we definitely see him more as an inside prospect. Um, we're going to have, if you think about it, we're going to have uh, Peter Fallon's leaving. You know, we got uh, Jared Nelson getting a little bit older. So we wanted to make sure we solidified the interior uh, so we can continue to be stout against the run game. You know, because for us, that's the number one thing that we try to take away. So, you know, we really see him as a prospect that could come in, you know, really hold down the middle, you know, demand double teams. Uh, when you watch his tape, you can really see him, 
you know, use his quickness off the ball, and he does a great job shedding blocks and making plays. So, you know, just an exciting uh, prospect for us. And, and, and you mentioned some guys moving on. You're losing some of your quality depth, certainly at the linebacker position. You guys turned to Turner Inge, a linebacker out of Williamstown High School in New Jersey, 6'1", 205 pounds, a first-team All-South Jersey player. Uh, 1,604 yards rushing and also 15 touchdowns. So it sounds like a pretty good athlete as well. Yeah, Turner Inge is an interesting story. So, you know, he, he's a guy that could play both sides of the ball. So when we first started looking at him, you know, we were kind of playing tug of war on <laughs> whether he'd play running back or whether he'd play linebacker. And, you know, uh, I'm a defensive guy. So, <laughs> you know, I'm in there saying linebacker all the way. But, you know, if you really think back to years past, what has made us successful is we've had athletic linebackers. And uh, we always look for guys who play running back or have that versatility because it really translates to our defense because we're, we're looking for guys that can play sideline to sideline, uh, play multiple positions, and, and really do, you know, a lot of different things, even on third down. So the wider the skill set, the better uh, for us. And you stay at that linebacker position. You're bringing a local product out of Exeter Township High School, J.R. Strauss, 6'3", 215 pounds, so good size there. First team all state selection, first team all county, and all academic team. So it's most like a, a smart football player. 77 tackles, also an athlete. 501 receiving yards and scored five touchdowns. Yeah, uh, good point. You know, we love smart football players. <laughs> so, you know, it never hurts. You know, to, number one, you want to always tell you this every year. You know, we want to find a local guy, you know, that could help us. And uh, he's just a guy, you know, we, we got involved with pretty early. Um, when, it, when you put a guy like him on paper, you know, that's what you're looking for. You know, he has the height. You know, he has the weight. You know, he has the speed. You know, all the metrics that you're looking for. But uh, he's just a really talented football player. You know, again, I think any time you can show your skill set on offense, I, I think it really adds a layer, of, you know, of dynamic ability uh, to what you can bring to the table. So, you know, we're real fired up to have him. You know, we think he's a guy that can make an early impact. Um, he has the size, the speed, the ability, you know, to be able to do that. So, the first thing you mentioned, him him being a smart football player, you know, is, is why I think he'll transition to us well. And now we go to the back end, Olivia, bringing two defensive backs. We'll start with Devin Marshall out of Catholic Memorial in Massachusetts, six foot, 190 pounds. He was the MVP of the Catholic Conference up there, the defensive MVP, but also an athlete. Five kickoff returns for touchdowns and also a, a good winning pedigree as a Massachusetts State Championship in 2021. Yeah, Devin Marshall's a, a interesting uh, prospect for us. Uh, Coach Matt Colangelo is recruiting him. You know, we, we had to stay on him to make sure we got an in-person, you know, evaluation on him this summer. And uh, I'll just tell you, first time I saw him in person, you know, I was kind of enamored by him and then got a chance to work him out a little bit. And uh, for his size and his build, you know, he's one of the most powerful, you know, prospects, you know, that I've, I feel like I've uh, had to evaluate, you know. When you see what he could do on offense and special teams, it just adds another layer, you know, of dynamic ability. But... You know, traditionally for DBs here, you know, we want guys that could play corner, that could play safety, uh, that have the size and the physicality to be able to do that. And uh, he, he has all those things. So, you know, I think he's a guy who flew under the radar, and I feel like we're lucky to have him. And you mentioned size. Our, our final recruit on the defensive side, Jonathan Wyatt from St. Thomas Aquinas in New Jersey, six foot two, so has good range, 175 pounds. He was also a first team All Division DB, first team All Central Jersey. 1,010 yards receiving. So you've seen these dual players all back and forth, 18 touchdowns as well, but also five interceptions. So it looks like he has good ball skills. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. So, you know, we're losing two senior corners, you know, Christian Benford, you know, you got Denzel Williams. If you really think about Christian Benford, uh, John Wyatt, when you watch his film, very similar, you know, a lot of receiving and offensive things on there uh, where Christian Benford could have played offense in college. But, you know, you see things like that translate to seven interceptions. So, you know, I could see John Wyatt, you know, being a guy that, that could take over that role, you know, being a playmaker. He has great ball skills. You know, he's long, has great range, great pedigree. You know, his brother plays at Temple. Um, but I could definitely see him stepping in and being a long cornerback, you know, right away. And, Coach, your defense had an outstanding year this year. I think it was probably – the culmination of your season maybe came down to the last regular season game. You guys take on the Battle of Blue, the Delaware Blue Hens. It comes down to the fourth quarter, and you guys need to make a stop, and it gets down inside the five-yard line, and your defense come up with the plays, and they needed them. Yeah, you know, uh, our guys been that way all season. You know, we've, we've really been through the fire. I feel like we've been through some really 
you know, tough games, you know, Richmond being the first one. And, you know, I think the guys really showed the ability to overcome and just stick together. And uh, that really never wavered, you know, all season. And it's really just been fun, you know, to coach this group of guys because when you walk in there every day as a coach with a, a group of guys that believe in each other and they believe in you as a coach, you know, they look you right in the eye and, and really do whatever you say. I mean, I, I really can't say enough good things about this team. So when it comes down to the end of that game, um, there was never any doubt, you know, that we were going to make that stop. And that's kind of the way we approach things is, is really to put the game in our players' hands, uh, try to put them in positions to succeed. And we trust and believe that they can get the job done. And uh, time and time again this year, they really came came through for us. And Coach, we appreciate your time. It sounds like you got five really quality young men we work with here in the future. Yes, sir. We're pretty excited uh, about about the guys we have. Uh, we think they can all make great impact for us. So, you know, this day and age, you know, getting those guys to sign on the dotted line is, is always an exciting day. And he's going to throw a pass to Todd Summers, who makes the catch at the 30 to the 25. Oh, what a play to call on fourth and short. And it's going to be a design quarterback run up the middle, and Smith brings it inside the five-yard line on a gaping hole over the right side. Turns, give it to Covington. Can he get in the end zone straight ahead? We're waiting. Yes, he is in the end zone. Villanova touchdown, and the Wildcats get on the board. The extra point is on the way, and it is good. What a year for Cole Bunce trying to find an angle, and eventually oh. he is just taken down hard by Ty Fine, Trent. Trent. <laughs> Going to throw it down the right sideline, and Benford intercepts it at the goal line. Throw it towards the end zone. It's Intercept. picked off by Ty Trent. He's going to tuck it and run with it. Cuts to the middle, 35, 40, 45. He's in midfield. He now goes to the wide side of the field by the Villanova bench, and he runs out of bounds. Down the middle of the field, Hague Soap makes the catch at the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. It's a foot race, and he is going to be brought down literally at the one or two yard line. And it's going to be a give to Jackson up the middle. And on his second effort, he is into the end zone. Villanova touchdown. And the Wildcats have tied it up 13-13 with 11.43 to go in the fourth quarter. Extra point coming by Bunce to give the Cats the lead. Back to pass. Fires it down the left side. Pringle is there to make the catch at the 30-yard line. Play action. Smith drops back. Looking down the middle of the field. Hey, it makes the catch in the end zone. Villanova touchdown. Cats lead by seven. Hey, Oletti. He's going to try to shovel it. And did he get in or not? He's short. That's it. Cats win. Cats win. Cats win. Final score. Villanova 21. Delaware 13. And the CAA champions are the Villanova Wildcats. Welcome back. We're joined by special teams coordinator Ross Pennypacker. And, and coach, you guys bring in one specialist this year to help you out. Daniel Mueller is the punter out of Lancaster Catholic. 5'10", 180 pounds. He was a preseason All-State punter. He's, you know, actually 21 career field goals, 196 points, but averaged 42 yards a punt. So uh, I think you're bringing him in as a punter, but also has showed in high school he can do some other things. Yeah, we brought Danny in to do all three, really. Um, we thought his, his best position for us moving forward right now is, is a punter, and we still do have Nate find a car on the program. So we thought it was important to build some depth, but right now we think Danny can be a really good punter, but he could also do kickoffs and field goals. So we'll let that play out uh, once we get into preseason training camp and just kind of see how it unfolds. And you guys had a really good year on special teams, and I think as fans watch more and more football, they understand the importance of the return game, the punt coverage. Uh, talk a little bit about your, your thoughts on, on, the, on your units this year and how they played. Yeah, I think uh, just starting with, uh, you know, really our, our field goal team, uh, I think that was a big improvement from, from years previous with uh, Cole Buns coming in for the one year and, and really solidifying that position for, for the season. Um, did a phenomenal job. Um, we're, we were really happy to have him, and he also handled the kickoff team. But uh, I think Dean told me before the game he was 
one or two points shy of the single season record wow. for, for kickers. So he ended up uh, getting that in the last game. So uh, we're, we're really going to miss him, but did a phenomenal job with, with the postal unit, we call it. Um, and then as far as the coverage teams goes, kickoff, he, he handled the kickoffs, did a really good job with that. And, you know, here at Villanova, we have uh, – we have a, a situation where we have to play a lot of guys on, on special teams. We may, we may not have the depth uh, that other teams have, so we got to, you know, kind of find guys that are have special teams role, maybe maybe more um, on special teams than offense or defense. So the guys who we put out there are guys who have totally bought in, you know, to you know two special teams that do a great job for us. You know, TD uh, Ayodurjai yeah. had a great year for us. Uh, he was pretty much on all special teams. You know, did some returns. You know, blocked a few punts. You know, the scoop and score uh, he had against Albany, and then um, he's on our punt coverage team. So, you know, it's really just a whole. You know, the whole staff is bought in. You know, I may be the special teams coordinator, but we really try to divide it up amongst the staff so everybody has a chance to interact with the team. Um, like Coach Reed does the uh, does the kickoff team. Coach Colangelo does the punt block unit. You know, uh, I take care of the punt team. You know, Coach uh, Crowley actually did the uh, the KOR team. Um, you know, and then uh, Coach uh, Devine does the uh, field goal unit team. So it's a it's a by committee thing. So, you know, we, we feel like we uh, we care about it here, and we we make it a big emphasis. And Coach, you, you mentioned one of the biggest plays of this season. You guys go up to Albany. It's a terrible rainstorm. Offense really struggling to move the football because of the wind and the rain. And your special teams comes up with a huge play. And you mentioned TDIO Durajaye with the scoop and score here. Yeah. Back to the Villanova Football Signing Show. Coach, we've got an opportunity to see the nine young men that are going to be joining your program this fall. And uh, uh, I guess your thoughts, just a quick recap, your feelings on, on this nine-person class. Yeah, no, this is a great start to this year's class. As I mentioned uh, up front, it's not complete. We do have a little more work to do once we get in uh, through the holidays and into the January, February months, so our guys will be back on the road. But we really feel we targeted some areas of need. We have a lot of athleticism. We have a lot of length in these guys in the skill positions. We're excited about, you know, the running back down there from Texas. He's actually Bryce Gaines's old high school teammate, comes from Second Baptist High School down there in Houston, Eli Smith. So we're excited about that. And, um, you know, we're just able to, you know, with the reputation that a place like Villanova has, we're able to go get guys from Texas. We're able to go get guys from Florida, you know, and those types of things. So we're excited about the athleticism in this skill group here. It's predominantly skill group right now. We'll be looking for some more D linemen and things uh, when we get into the next phase. But we just think this is a great starting point to the 2022 class. And Coach, you mentioned athleticism. A lot of guys that in high school playing on both sides of the ball, so they showed their versatility and their athleticism. Something you look for as the staff, guys that are multi-talented, multi-versatile? Yeah, we look for guys, you know, obviously if you take a guy who's a really good wide out and playing DB and then we have him transition here to DB, he's got great ball skills. You look at guys that are running backs and now you're transitioning to linebackers. They have good speed, you know, and size. And, and it just helps. And we look for guys that play other sports, you know, not just multiple positions in football, but we like guys that, you know, run track. And, and, and play lacrosse in the offseason and so on. So we look for guys that have that athleticism. We look for guys that have that length. If you look at our secondary, we have a lot of long, lean athletes back there, and these guys coming in this year fit that mold as well. So, And, uh, you know, we got Nate Hill. We're always looking to add some uh, athleticism, height, speed to the wideout position, and, uh, you know, he adds that as well. So really excited about the guys that, you know, some of these guys are running. Look at Tanner Maddox, our quarterback. Tanner Maddox coming in here. You know, one of the big plays in his highlight film is his playing safety, and he lights people <laughs> up and has a big hit. You know, so you know he's not shy of contact. So, and you saw what Dan Smith did in this most Certainly recent did. game. He ran over, you know, one of those uh, jackrabbit linebackers, and kind of the linebacker got the worst of it, if you will. So, you know, we look for guys that are multifaceted, multi-talented, and uh, multi-athletes. Coach, once again, I want to congratulate you on a great season, and the future looks really bright here for Villanova football. Thanks so much, Steve, and uh, really, like I said, appreciate you uh, being with us and doing the show with us throughout the season and just, uh, you know, your support as well. <laughs> 